All right, so happy to be here at the Hoot Morning. Here we are, one big ass happy family. Under one big ass family tree. Here we are, one big ass happy family. And life is one big ass family jubilee. The man, Roger Allen Wade. Thanks, that was a great set. Thank you, thank you, man. We look forward to this all year long. And uh, I, I, I just love coming out here. And the coolest thing today, this is a uh, guitar my friend Chris Pontius has let me play now, but like on stage today, I get to play his national. And it's like, um, I've used it on a couple of records and he's always taking care of us on guitars. He loves guitars and, and we love him. And his national is like, he had, they made it for him special, and it's got his name up on the 12th fret. And nothing plays like it. It's just a magnificent instrument. And a pleasure. That's one of my sweetest things about getting to play today with it. That's awesome. And just the coolest thing about today, though, is my cousin Madison Clapp got to come down. And I, I know she's busy, but she is just a, a shining light. And to get her to be at the Hoot Nanny with us today, me and her dad, it's just an absolute uh, pleasure. And Chris Pontius was here, Dan Creech. And, of course, uh, my hero and my cousin Johnny Knoxville is yeah. with us today, which means the world to me. It was big ass happy family jubilee. It was, and wasn't it? Just um, I don't know. We just look forward to it all year. Bill Hardy's so kind to have us down. I got to throw this in right now because and I, I want Bill Hardy to see this. Is we got to get Chris Pontius and his band down here next year. And uh, wouldn't that be a that make it truly a big yeah, ass happy that's family all jubilee? What was the first instrument that you were playing? Um. I can't say because Madison's in here. <laughs> no, no um, actually, my grandmother and Johnny Knoxville's grandmother, when me and my brother were little, she bought me a guitar. It was like a student guitar and, uh, and, and a Mel Bay guitar book. And uh, it might as well have been in Latin or something. I didn't ever get nothing about it. We would use the guitar to throw at one another. But years later, uh, Johnny Knoxville's dad gave me an old Gibson guitar he had, and that's when I really started trying to figure it out. Wow. And then um, most of what, I'll pick up stuff from Pontius when I come out, and he'll show me new things, and I'll go home and practice them, and it, it inspires me. And, and So I've been playing more guitar the last year than I have in my whole life, and you can't tell it yet, and it makes me appreciate what it takes for these cats to get really good. He never brings his guitar when he does. <laughs> No, Why do you want to bring up old stuff? Oh, sorry. <laughs> old stuff hasn't this morning. No. <laughs> and really, it isn't. Funny is getting to drive all the guitars out. Man, it's the coolest thing when we're recording or anything. You know, Pontius pretty much takes care of the guitars for us. And even like today, Knoxville has to call Pontius to see if we can round up a guitar for the show, which happens to be at 2 o'clock or 2.30. Yeah. So we, all the wheels are in motion, and we're trying to make it down here and get it. But we were recording at Dan Creech's uh, in Santa Monica's studio. And so Pontius was going to bring guitars. And we're, in the, we're just me and Knoxville and Dan in there doing the thing. And man, through the door like a storm, you should name it name it after someone. Here comes Pontius with these guitars and he's in the floor, he's got guitars everywhere and he's telling us he knows more about guitars than anyone I know. And it's so, just to hear him talk about them, because he loves them and he knows things about them that I've always been curious about, but he knows it. And he was telling us all about them and getting it all done and we're just sitting there, all three of us are just in awe of, of this force of nature which is Chris Pontius. What do we call him? Hurricane Pontius, maybe, or would it be Tropical Storm with his guitar knowledge? He is a force of nature. Yeah, okay. They're just, they're re he's recording an album and, and he just doesn't bring a guitar and he, he grabs the one that's like laying on the couch there. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, how about songwriting? How did that come into your life? Man, the same way as guitar playing, really. Mm -hmm. It just, um, I still don't pretend to know anything about it, but it makes me feel good when I think I've done it well. And uh, there's there's occasion where I do feel like I'm getting lucky or just holding the pencil, you know, when it's coming from somewhere else. Now there's plenty I wad up and throw away, 
that uh, or that's part of that process was more you know I was gonna throw a lot more away than I actually use but I still did the same way I did when I first time I ever tried it you know you just keep doing it till it makes you feel good and uh, that's all I know about it <laughs> If I tried to rely very long on my guitar playing, I, we'd be living in the streets and, and not eating regular. So I try to keep it, you know, it's taken me a while uh, just to find the, 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 what you do well. One of the most important things that ever happened in my life is him. Is Johnny Knoxville. He, uh, you know, he believed in what we were doing, what I was trying to do before I ever did, and understood it before I ever did. And has, you know, we've got it on tape now. We got it on records now. The way I always wanted it to sound. I no, 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 no. Since it's so close to Valentine's Day, and we're at the beautiful, legendary Hoot Nanny, we got a sequel to Go Back to Horror. Yeah. She's gone back to whoring again She goes back and forth between women and men I kicked her ass out, then let her back in Now she's gone back to whoring She's gone back to whoring She's gone back to Irvine again As far as honesty trumps technique, honesty trumps meter, rhyme and timing, and I mean to me musically, I don't care how correct it is, if it ain't honest, I mean I, it doesn't it doesn't do anything, and if it is, I don't care. Like Woody Guthrie, you know, uh, I don't think anybody Woody wouldn't win many singing contests or many guitar playing contests. Uh, but man, nobody nobody does it to me like Woody Guthrie. No, I mean that just I don't know. I, I don't even understand what it is until uh, lately, and it's just that honesty. You know, he's just being Woody. That's what he's good at. Mm -hmm. and you've written songs for legendary people, so I mean, like Johnny Cash. And yeah, yeah, that was that was really neat. You know, I wish I'd understood it more at the time. It was fun doing that, and and I'm glad that it happened. Mm -hmm. um, it only lasts for a minute, though, or three minutes, however long that song is. And then, you know, I, I learned that from Knox, too. You know, you got to stay fresh and, and be just about what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, hell, if I'd have made Jackass, I'd have had me a cape and, and pretty much been in retirement. He's, he's like, busy with new stuff all the time. Hits the ground running and, and you know, always creating. Uh, and so those things, I, I, I'm proud of them, and I'm glad they happened, and I'm, and I'm very grateful for it. But, man, I, I, I'm... You know, knee deep in our next record. You know, that's that's what matters now. Now I got my cousin Madison here with me today. This is a beautiful young lady down here. I couldn't talk her into doing this, but she did the part. I say, what? Well, you know what time it is, and she tells me what time is it? It's time for the chicken song. I know she's gonna hit, hit me. Though. Chicken wakes up to a new world every day. As far as the chicken's concerned, everything's a okay. Yeah, the chicken don't worry about nothing but clucking and the price of eggs today. And don't worry too much about that. Cause what the farmer don't snatch before she can hatch, the weasel gonna steal them anyway. A chicken wakes up to a whole new world every day. You reckon the chicken ever find yourself fretting about getting old and ugly and fat? I know a chicken's kind of dim, but I'm going out on a limb, and I'd say a chicken's smarter than that. Well, a chicken don't worry about nothing but clucking and the prize of eggs today. And a chicken wakes up to a whole new world every day. Yeah, a chicken wakes up to a whole world every day. Flying the prize of eggs. 
to live in the car in the car today. Ain't no chicken, don't worry about nothing but plucking the present eggs today. And the chicken wakes up to a whole new world every day. Yeah, our chicken butt wakes up to a whole new world every day. And we had to do this. One. So together, these guys, you know, this Knox guy you keep talking about, that's, that's this guy right here. So. Yeah, he's giving me credit for things I never did, but, uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. He, I have the ambition, he has all the talent, so that's how it works. Yeah? Yeah. What are you guys, you doing a radio show for uh, Sirius and XM, right? Yeah, the Big Ass Happy Family Jubilee on Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 uh, specific, and tonight... Who are we doing a tribute to? Um, let's see. Uh, who? Uh, oh, okay, hang on. Who was it? No, the the great Henry Faggart is yeah, a tribute yeah. to him. What's his real name? Jackie Fargo. Jackie Fargo, the wrestler. His real name was Henry Faggart, and he was a legendary wrestler out of Memphis. Uh, that you know, the kind of there was Jerry the King Lawler, but before that, there was Jerry Fargo, and Jerry Law uh, Jerry Lawler looks up to. Jackie Fargo. So that's who we're doing to this week. The originator of Dirty Tactics. Yeah. Yeah, before him, I mean, he was first got to whack somebody with a folding chair. And I so. That was Rick Flair. <laughs> no, Fargo was. Well, he did the that. Fargo strut, and uh, Ric Flair copied Jackie Fargo with the with that strut he did, and I copied handsome Jack copying Ric Flair's strut in Jackass 2 after the rocket blew up. So it all comes back around. That's our tribute tonight. I went Knoxville rode the rocket at, 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 um, in Jackass 2 and it you know, it goes up, and, and that was the second take that actually made the movie, right? The, yeah, the first, well, the first one exploded, and then that made the movie, and then the second one I actually it, it didn't explode. It blew out the side, the one that blew out the side and nearly killed him. Well, I was asking him, where did you find these guys? I mean, rocket builders, you think that's pretty serious business. He's like, in the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> Find this rocket guy in the phone book. <laughs> right. I, I thought, I mean, they're pretty good rocket guys. They, they said, you know, they're yeah, pretty yeah. volatile. You don't want a pretty good rocket guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you were, you were instrumental getting his music on your film as well. So, I mean, that was... That well, was no, we were lucky enough to have his music in our film. Like, I played it for Spike and Jeff, uh, my partners, and they loved it, and the cast loved it. So we were lucky to have it in our films, and uh, we try to, every time we do something, we try to get a Raj film in it, and he's nice enough to write us one. I'll just put it as thank God for nepotism. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's not how it is. Been, he's been very good to me. Very, no, very I've always good been his me. biggest fan, and he's so like to be able to work with him is... Fan. He's, he's just... Now, Knoxville's greatest gift to me is his just... Uh, unfailing honesty uh, you know artistically and everything is like man when he tells you something you're not wondering is he putting you on or trying to sugarcoat it because he don't but he, if, if he likes it it's the same way too you know he's not doing it to be hard on you but man as a songwriter a singer and you know recording stuff just to have that is is it's a rare and precious thing and I'm very grateful for that and uh, just uh, you know, it's the same way as, as honesty trumps everything else when you're trying to do it, but it trumps everything else getting it down to, you know, and trying to figure out where you are, because you don't know when you're that close to it. I, you know, it makes me wonder who he goes to for that, and because, you know, he's always creating, and I don't know if he trusts himself with it or if he's asking other people, but it fascinates me how he gets through that. I always ask Spike. <laughs> <laughs> was he doing that stuff when he was a kid, too? Yeah, he ain't yeah. changed a bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> the scariest thing I saw was when you when you did that from the scaffolding or the lighting tress on Letterman. Uh, oh, oh uh, right. That, when I dropped in on that the, from the. Me out, man. I have to tell you. That was funny. I I, I left there on crutches that night. I sprained both my ankles. Oh, the, I, I'm not very good at falls, <laughs> and I never want to get good at it, doing what I do. Nobody wants a talented stuntman. Right. So everyone's like, you know how to fall, right? I'm like, no, and I'm not going to learn, because who? nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but I was really hemmed in up there, because if I would have jumped out, I think, in hindsight, jumped out and tried to roll, but it was just, I just dropped straight with not even thinking about it beforehand, which has gotten a lot of great footage for us. But, man, that ground was hard. 
Uh, so, but yeah, I remember that. He I heard, drives I heard, like he jumps. I heard, <laughs> this is uh, this is just tremendous for me. And, uh, oh, thank you, and, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys are uh, America to me. You're uh, Americana. Well, thank you, know, you. It's entertainment, and that's what you guys are about. And uh, I love you guys for it. And uh, thank, thank you, you for much. this private time. This is awesome. No sweat. And yeah. it being America, I just want to let everyone know that uh, uh, all uh, Roger Allen Wade's records are on sale anywhere they sell music online. And I damn near sold out all the shirts for today. Uh, we'll talk about that afterwards, but I'm pretty happy. <laughs> well, I'll the, the last big one ass happy one family jubilee on yes. Outlaw Country. Let's yeah. get one. We are one big ass happy family. Listen to the big ass happy family jubilee on Outlaw Country on Sirius XM, where we're rocking and rolling. Thank you.